<clears throat> okay, we're back out in the garage. And the first thing we're going to cover here is uh, some problems that we're going to try to eliminate on the torch height controller. As you're cutting, you know, just all kinds of vapors and water being shot up and are condensating and splashing on your lead screws and all that assembly. You know, it comes to the front here, comes to the sides, and uh, as you can see, that although this gap gets less, most of the time, it, uh, there's gonna be a gap there. And so it would be nice if we could partially enclose the sides as the gas the water comes up, they can't delay their ability to get in there. And then if we can close off this gap here, okay. <clears throat> now, we go take a look on a more front end view of it. We've got two screws, one here and one here, that basically hold the torch height controller assembly to the main assembly right there. So we're going to use these two screws to attach some side panels. So I'm going to just loosen one of these. And here's what the side guard is going to look like. Again, a DXF file will be in the uh, description below. So we're just going to slide that in. And then tighten the assembly back up. And we're going to do it with the other side. And if you notice, there's some tape here on the top. You need to put that on there so this wire right here won't chafe on it as it goes up and down. And so these side panels pretty much protect it on the sides. And I, I glued this little lip with Herculite on it to close the gap on the bottom. But we, again, we see we still have this problem. Now, we, <clears throat> we resolve that with the uh, new torch height controller, or torch mount that I have. And uh, again, you can see, you, know, you can get the uh, DXF file in the description below on how to make this thing. We're just going to attach it using the same existing screws. And this torch eye controller is adjustable in the, this plane as you see you can adjust it here to take out any misalignment of your plasma jet. Uh, there's a prior video that tells you how to adjust it so you adjust it by rotating the barrel of the cutter and going up and down. We won't get into that right now. So anyway as you can see, this, uh, this torch height cover comes all the way down. So as this thing rides up, it never allows gases or water to get into the, uh, the lead screw. Okay, the next thing we're gonna cover is uh, mounting lasers uh, to help with the alignment, uh, help you uh, as you're doing dry runs to make sure that you know it, uh, you don't run off uh, any of the material. So the mounting plate has two holes to mount this assembly. And 
it's pretty easy. and snug it up. So now we're ready to mount our uh, lasers. And it's pretty straightforward. Now, all these parts, again, I've got DXF uh, files for them. So you should be able to do this yourself. And we need to change this. This is one of the old mounts, so we need to get rid of it. Okay, this is the uh, laser mounts as they're finished. And you can see it creates a, a nice crosshair. And again, the DXF files for all these components are in the uh, discussion below. Now another thing uh, that I learned to do is, you know, when you, I, I do a lot of small bit stuff, like this sheet right here. And of course it's narrow, and you know, when it cuts here, just the, the, the water just goes all over the place. I mean, it just makes a mess. So I've just, you know, taken some sheet metal, and then I just move it there. And so I just put some sheet metal, like, like right there and now it covers everything else so I don't get all this water splatter and I can set it and it works just fine. Okay now I'd like to cover uh, the use of a splash guard for the main torch itself. Again you know with this thing is cutting fumes are just coming everywhere waters rising splattering and sparks are going up and down and around and so <clears throat> i've designed this splash guard it's three inches circle from the center 
and this is square here because it will have interference as it comes up against the side component and this has got to be straight line because it will have interference with the THC itself. So it's really simple. This is just a repurposed uh, torch holder that comes with the basic uh, crossfire. And so I just put it up there, just snug it a little bit. And then it will go up and down. And then so, well, if I line it, to the uh, a workpiece with the lasers, I'll have this off, and after I've aligned it to the workpiece, then I'll put this piece on. Now another thing I use is this. This spark guard is pretty good. It, it keeps stuff from coming up, but stuff still does shoot off at a side angle. And what I've done is, you know, I've just taken some sheet metal and a two inch flange, and what I'll do is I'll just put a, if I'm working a small parts, a section like this, then I just have a splash guard here, another one here, another one down there, and maybe one on the end. And what it does is just completely contains all the sparks right here. Now, <clears throat> Most of you guys run a commercial shop, you don't care. But you know, I'm, I'm operating in my small garage. Uh, you know, it's just a fire hazard with all these sparks flying off and hitting everything in the dust. And so that's what I use it for. Okay, we're back in the garage, and the uh, next one thing I want to cover is, you know, when the torch gets this close to the y-axis, the fumes and, and the uh, sparks just hose this part of the gantry where you've got those uh, rollers. And that's not good. It's going to clog them up. So what I've done is I've built a cover for this one end that protects it from that kind of a splatter. And let me just roll it out here and so you can kind of see what's going on. And as you can see, it just comes out and it covers it keeps all those sparks and everything from hitting your rollers and gumming them up. So, something you might want to consider. Okay, so the last thing I like to cover is uh, the lead screws, the X and Y main lead screws. Again, you know, our accuracy of our machines are dependent upon, you know, uh, how clean and precise these lead screws are. So what I've done is I've just designed a set of dust covers for them. And uh, here's one for the x-axis. And you can see how it mounts and how it basically covers the, the lead screw. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, water comes down and up and splashes over. Uh, it does a pretty good job. Plus, it protects it... Uh, from just dust that settles. And then we have the same thing for the Y coordinates. And you can see the lead screw there and how the dust cover basically covers it. And it does a pretty good job. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next video.